All right. Well, good morning. If you're joining us on live stream, welcome. Uh, we're heading into the first of several weeks on membership. I'm going to just turn this a little bit more. So if you're maybe unable to be here today, I would like for you to watch this because we believe that there is an understanding that should happen uh, when it comes to becoming a member of Grace Lighthouse Church. And I think any church should really kind of lay out what their uh, thinking is regarding what makes them up as a church. And then when there's any misunderstanding or why do you guys do that that way or whatever the question might come up, you understand that this is who we are, this is what, um, you know, who, who we believe God has told us to do according to the scripture. And uh, so we, we kind of stick with that. And it's kind of a guide. Ultimately, church membership is really a guide and a help for everybody who's a member here. Um, let me pray for us because I got several things I want to share. And uh, I'm looking forward to this. This is exciting to me. I love the fact that we may have you know, more people over the next several weeks join us. And if you, for some reason, aren't here for one of the weeks, don't worry about it. It's going to be recorded. You get credit. You watch it. You'll get the, uh, I'll make sure that you get the handouts that go with each week. So uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you that we have this wonderful opportunity to discuss church membership here at Grace Lighthouse Church. And church membership seems to have a lot of uh, questions behind it and is it really required is it really something that we should encourage so we would pray right now that you would uh, just give us clarity your mind the understanding father that you have for us to gain as we study further uh, about the early church and some of the expectations that were uh, very clear and so we we just give you thanks father now that you, we have people here that want to show their, um, their, uh, at least their willingness to learn more. So I give you praise for that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, no one's late. Uh, we're just getting started, opened up in prayer. And um, I really uh, find this to be one of those things that, you know, we, we as a church do a lot of stuff, right? And we have a lot of people that um, serve um, in this church, not everybody is an actual member of Grace Lighthouse Church, but they get involved and they serve and they are faithful and they're growing and they feel the increasing connection um, to the body. But I really believe that a, a, when a decision is made to actually align yourself with a local church, you go from just sort of being this flexible attender, I'll be there when I can, to really saying, I'm with them. I'm with them. I believe God has brought me here, and I'm with them. And I will work through all of my issues. <laughs> I'll work with the church issues. I will watch how God wants to develop this church. And by the grace of God, my gifts could be used here to serve the greater body of Christ. And uh, so I, I think we, you know, when we, we talk about this, this is, and I think it's just an important distinction. I mean, we welcome people, anybody, people come, I've had people come to me first day they've attended, pastor, I want to be a member of the church. They, I mean, they've never been here more than one service and they suddenly want to be a member. I, I think that's great that they felt, they felt the love. Thank you. Um, but again, that's, we're not just looking to add a name to a list. All right, that's important. There's, there's certain expectations when it comes to uh, church membership that should be clear. Like last two weeks ago, we don't baptize people who aren't saved. And we don't baptize people to make them saved. We baptize people who already have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I gave, hopefully, you all, um, and you're welcome, those of you who already are members. My wife can furnish you with the actual, I'm not going to give you the actual blue folder. <laughs> the blue folder is for the people who are going to be building and adding to this. Um, gave you a first set of documents that I think 
you know, sort of an overview of church membership, who we are as a church, and this is really only one aspect to it. And I think we really need four to five weeks to actually cover this in the short amount of time that we have. You know, we'll be here till 12. Um, no, I'm teasing. We won't be cutting into the church service time. But, um, but we definitely want people to be familiar, anybody who's uh, coming. So does anybody, Beth, in the back need a copy? And they're all set. All set. Okay. All right. All right. Perfect. Thank you. So I'd like for you to open up your packet, if you wouldn't. I just want to cover this a little bit. I was even thinking about, and I may still do this, put a little syllabus on the top cover, but that's not available yet. Um, going to cut to sort of chapter one today. And so the first page of this document, hopefully you, yours flows just like mine, says, why is church membership important? And we're going to cover that. And that's a two pa- it's two pages back to back. Um, and I, th- I think it will be helpful that you see the basis for church membership. Number two on the form there is what we believe and teach. Um, and some of this will be familiar to you that I don't think any of this should be earth shaking or earth shattering. Um, you know, we don't handle snakes. I just want to make that clear. Um, um, just, you know, there's, there's, we're pretty straight down the line, fairly clean, clear cut, at least from this particular overview. Um, and we'll talk about each of these, I hope, at least to some level today, maybe get to most of them and have to pick up next week. That was three pages. So what we believe and teach, it starts with, we are an independent Bible-centered evangelical church. And then page two talks about the Bible, the church, spiritual gifts, divisions, Number three, page three, prayer, giving and serving, missions, the rapture, and future things. And then finally there, you have a little application that we would love for you to fill out if this is something that you want to take the next step, because we would love to um, basically welcome new members on October 13th. So between now and the 6th of October, Lord willing, we'll be able to meet every Sunday at this time um, and by the end of that, I'd love for you to fill this out. Perhaps we can chat briefly and any questions you might have and feel free if there are questions that come up during the, you know, the overviews here, if you can come to me, I'd be happy to help answer anything that you might, you know, might want to make sure you understood what I said. Um, I do try to be clear, but I may not always be as clear as I should have been. All right, so that is your first and your, your last name and describe briefly when you ask Jesus to save you. That's always um, a good thing for us to review. We make sure that, yes, there has been a moment that I asked the Lord Jesus Christ. doesn't matter how, when it was, how long ago it was. Maybe it was recent. Maybe you thought you were, but you weren't sure, and then you made sure on that day. Um, it doesn't have to even be a date. If you have a date, great. I actually have a date. Um, it goes back to 1986, July, 6, 7, July 16th. Well, I can say I really believe. Now, there's a possibility I was actually saved before that, but I knew this day that I was saved, and everything seemed different going forward till this day that I'm alive, uh, getting to walk on the earth. Um, so, and again, salvation is different in terms of its overall initial experience for all of us. Some people are three, and they repented of stealing crayons, all right? And they asked Jesus to save them, and they want Christ to save them. That's as legitimate as a 50-year-old strung out on drugs and asks Jesus to save them. So that doesn't really matter when, it just matters that they did. Um, So that probably will just be for you, just a little brief overview of your testimony. I love to read these papers. They're so much fun. They give me joy to recap somebody's just brief history of how they came to faith. And then, have you been baptized as a believer in Jesus Christ? Yes, and maybe the year you were baptized, or a not yet. So, and we had Sue here, Sue, Sue, Auntie Sue, and Sue, recently baptized, was beautiful. Um, Hopefully you got to see all that in the videos, but um, if you weren't there, but it was very, very special. So, all right, let's let's go back to this church membership. Um, Why is it important? And Auntie Sue is welcome to get a packet. Auntie Sue, would you like a packet just to follow along? 
All right. Well, you okay? I'm a big person that believes people should be able to follow along. So anyway, um, why is church membership important? And I'm going to read this document. The universal church, which is really known as the body of Christ, you could see that in Romans chapter 12, verse 5, is composed of all true believers in Christ. And local churches are to be the microcosms of the universal church. As believers, we have our names written in the Lamb's book of life, Revelation 20, verse 12. And that is that is what is most important. However, it's also important to commit to a local church where we can give of our resources, serve others, be accountable. I would add there to learn the word of God and to you know, really become a part of that community. The Bible does not directly address the concept of formal church membership. However, or but, there are several passages that strongly imply its existence in the early church. And the Lord added to them day by day those that were being saved. Acts 2, verse 47. This verse indicates that salvation was a prerequisite for being added to the church. In Acts chapter 2, verse 41, it seems that somebody was keeping numerical record of those who were saved and, th and thus joining the church. Churches today that require salvation before membership are simply following the biblical model. And we could certainly see 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 18. There are other places in the New Testament that show that the local church as a well-defined group. In Acts 6, the church in Jerusalem is told to hold elections of some kind. Choose seven men from among you. The phrase among you suggests a group of people distinct from others were not among them. Simply put, the deacons were to be church members. Church membership is important because it helps define the pastor's responsibility. Hebrews 13, 17 instructs, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Whom will a pastor give an account for except the members of his own church? He's not responsible for all Christians in the world. Well, the few. Okay. Only for those under his care. Likewise, he's not responsible for all the people in his community. Only for believers under his leadership. His church members. Membership in a local church is a way of voluntarily, this is a wonderful way of saying it, placing oneself under the spiritual authority of of a pastor. Church membership is also important because without it, there can be no accountability or church discipline. 1 Corinthians 5, 1 to 13 teaches the church how to deal with a blatant, unrepentant sin in its midst. In verses 12 to 13, the words inside and outside are used in reference to the church body. We only judge those who are inside the church. Church members how can we know who is inside or outside the church without an official membership role? And see Matthew 18, verse 17. That really is a great portion of Scripture when it comes to dealing with difficulty, um, relationship challenges of many kinds. We have come from a church. I met Beth at a church in Duxbury, and I had observed church discipline taking place at a time in the life of that church. And sometimes it goes well, and sometimes it doesn't. Let's just say it that way. And usually, and as the Scripture provides, there's a sequence of events that always takes place when dealing with a sinning brother in the church. Number one, you go to them privately. You go to them privately. If that doesn't work, you bring it up a notch. You bring somebody with you. I have tried to reconcile with this person. I want to have a relationship restored and nothing. Now we have to figure out, give that some time. That's just not like, okay, you had 11 seconds to decide. Sometimes people need time. Sometimes there are situations that you just can't rush. But I think a sufficient amount of time might be maybe a few weeks and you get no response, that, at that time, 
sometimes the church leadership will get involved. And at that time, if that problem can't, at that third level, can't get dealt with, you put them out of the church. Because typically at that level, it's caused disruption, divisions, things that you know made that environment now struggling because of somebody's either stubborn heart, unrepentant heart, unforgiving heart. There's a lot of things that could go in here. Um, sometimes it's unforgiveness, and unforgiveness is so important. You know, so important that we don't let that thing fester for very long. Listen, we're going to get hurt in this life. We're going to get hurt by Christians, and sometimes we just have to say, you know what, I. I, I'm just going to go back to the cross right now and I'm going to look at that cross and I'm going to remember that he took every one of my sins and I'm going to humble myself before Almighty God and I'm going to receive that brother or sister back into my life and I'm going to let the blood of Jesus Christ as it's washed me wash over them, likely it already has, but the washing of the word come also into effect here and we're going to move on. Trust sometimes takes time to rebuild, I get that, but there's no reason why trust can't be rebuilt over time. And so th there is always a bit of a process here. Anyway, so church discipline can be one of those areas that we just have to be mindful and hopefully not often. If a church is always disciplining people, I think there's something a little bit wrong. And we want to make sure that, listen, this is, this is a very, this can be very much under the radar doesn't have to turn into gossip it doesn't have to turn into destruction it can just simply be dealt with privately and that's why we want to when we talk about stuff going on in in the life of our church we're going to get to some of those you know more important things um you know what how do you flesh this stuff out i think you'll you'll appreciate wow that this is how glc is following a biblical pattern okay although there's no scriptural mandate for official church membership there is certainly nothing to prohibit it. And it seems the early church was structured in such a way that people clearly knew if someone was in or they were out of the church. Church membership is a way of identifying oneself with a local body of believers and of making oneself accountable to proper spiritual leadership. Church membership is a statement of solidarity and like-mindedness See Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. I'd encourage you to look at all of these references, and they will all be found in the New Testament. Church membership is also a valuable, valuable for organizational purposes. It's a good way of determining who's allowed to vote on important church decisions and who's eligible for official church positions. Church membership is not required of Christians. It is simply a way of saying, I'm a Christian, and I believe this church is a good church. And so it's kind of, I think, a good summary. I did not write this document, but I certainly have embraced it. Um, I think, obviously, you could probably add more to this. Uh, but I think it was well-balanced. It gave really good, some good indications of why people who are not a member of a local church but love that church should take the next step and formally join. Like, I am part of this body. And I love the fact that we do, we have a, I'm going to get, we're not going to get to the technical aspects of that today, but we have a whole bylaws constitution that we run our, our church leadership business meetings by. We follow, you know, the order of making sure that decisions that are made are recorded, all of the minutes of the church uh, for whether they're the smaller business meetings or the larger business meetings, everything is recorded. There's not one decision that we make major in this church that if we believe this, the Constitution dictates that it's to be brought before either leadership for a vote or the greater body, that p the members get to speak into that. A lot of times it seems pretty straightforward. The church is making the next step, and we're going to do this. And so everybody's like all in favor. Everybody say aye. It's like, you know, uh, if, if people are not in favor, they have a chance. Can I raise my hand here? I don't like the fact that you guys are doing this. I feel a little bit bothered by this. All of a sudden, we've got some exchange going on, but we're not saying you're, you're, you know, we're not just looking for yes people around here. Listen, if there's something that needs to be that we didn't think about or we missed, the leadership will listen to that. The, the church body may be better for it. So be, God may be giving discernment where sometimes we thought we had this, you know, all these things you know, figured out and maybe we didn't. And we, sometimes that's the benefit and the blessing 
of the body having an opportunity to you know, be part of a decision process. All right, so turn your page over. I'm going to spend a few minutes on these. We will not get to all of these, but this is kind of getting down to the, the, the real basics of what Grace Lighthouse Church believes, um, who we are. You could say, okay, this is what they believe. All, a lot of this stuff is already posted onto our website, and you would be able to you know, look at this again or hold your copies. I think it's nice, you know, whoop. I bought these folders yesterday. I'm like blue for Grace Lighthouse Church, two shades of blue on here. A little yellow, remember, re representing our little lighthouse idea of lighting the way. Um, but this will be your, your church membership packet, and it will be good for you to have your, the latest um, you know, updated constitution. that you, You'll be getting that. You'll be able to see, like, a constitution pastor. No, I don't like those bylaws. And, but it's good that you have it, because this is who we are. Um, all right, so... Any questions so far before we turn the page? You changed Auntie Sue would like a packet. Okay, so. All right, so. Um, Grace Lighthouse Church, I'm on page three, what we believe and teach. We are an independent, Bible-centered, evangelical church. Some might consider us non-denominational. The label often encompasses a wide range of beliefs. So to make it easy for you, here's a list of what we consider important to hold true uh, and hold to be true. In other words, these are, these are the non-negotiables. Um, well, this is who we are. And again, um, you know, you, you, when you think about non-denominational, that can be like such a broad term. We are, in many ways, as a church, are probably more Baptistic, if you would. We're probably more. We re, re, and I am a, I'm a dispensational teacher. In other words, I believe that God has been operating. Well, he's always been operating. But when it comes to the earth, there's a period that has been, that he's moved when the creation happened. He's moved when he gave the law. He moved differently when he put the, the kings in place. He moved through the prophets. Now he's moving through the church. And so each of these isn't just this hard line of a start stop. Essentially, they dissolve sort of into each other. But right now where we're living in this age, we are in the church age. And so we live in a time where God is building his church. It is, let's just put it this way, it is a super messy process. Let's just say that. Building the church is messy. Jesus knows that. He knows that we are very uncooperative. We, we are resistors. We take time. But, you know, Christ is working and uh, he saves and that's the point about salvation. Salvation is a one-time event. It doesn't demand behavioral perfection. What it, re what it requires is believing the gospel. He died for me and I trust that. He paid for my sins in full. I trust that. Now, you're growing in your relationship to him as you're learning the word of God. But you can't expect a brand new Christian to know a lot about the scripture. You can't yell at a one-year-old, why aren't you walking yet? You know, that wouldn't make sense. And we don't do that to new Christians. What we want to do is provide them opportunities to develop and to grow and to appreciate the salvation that they've now received. Number one. God. God is one being with three persons, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is the creator and the sustainer of all things. Christ is God in human flesh, fully God, fully man, who, became, who came to earth to live a perfect life and die for the sins of all mankind. Those who believe on him are given the Holy Spirit to dwell in them. And there's a series of verses there that are supporting to this idea of who God is. Number two, salvation. The gift of salvation is always by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Christ gave his life for us on the cross and rose from the dead on the third day. And we must believe on him to be born again to have eternal life. The free gift of eternal life is never taken back by Jesus. Those who reject Jesus Christ and his free gift of salvation 
have no hope and will spend eternity in eternal suffering. Acts 4, John 3, John 5, John 10, Romans 10. You often hear me uh, reference that one. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Beautiful, right? 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, for Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I learned that one as a summer missionary. And, um, and everybody probably has heard this one. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It's not the result of works, lest anyone should boast. In other words, you can't brag, oh my goodness, God saved me because I'm so good. Nuh-uh. That's not correct thinking. God saved you because you're a sinner and you trusted Christ and your status from being a sinner is now turned to being a saint. That's the way you want to think, Christian. You're not just thinking that I'm just a sinner saved by grace. That is bad theology. I, have, I, am, I was a sinner. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm washed in the word. And I have a new title that God sees me as now. I am a saint. I am his child. The way you think is the, is, will change the way you walk and live. And I think it's so important that we um, grapple with these greater wonderful truths because they change us. Doesn't mean that we've got it all right. It doesn't mean that we don't need to be corrected. But it, what it does mean is that I belong to him and I can trust His Holy Spirit to bring into my life anything that I need that is not right. Listen, people think like, oh, the, listen, I, do I believe the Holy Spirit convicts us? Yes, He convicts us, but He's also a comforter. And if you're, if you're sitting around feeling all this nonstop conviction, I believe Satan has hijacked that weakness going on in our mind and he's trying to rub your face in your ongoing or past failures that were washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen, just learn to walk. Walk in faith. Walk in trust. Walk as a child of God. I'm going to end with this one. This is probably a great way to end. And then we're going to go to more of these next week. Sorry, we didn't get very far, but we're laying a good foundation, I think. The Bible. The Bible is the holy and timeless word of God the ultimate framework of truth. It is living and active, and it provides the guidance we need to live the Christian life. Believers need to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and, of the Lord and Jesus Christ by learning and understanding the Scriptures in context. This occurs through personal study of the Bible, attending worship services on Sunday mornings. That's when we have them. <laughs> Uh, as well as Sunday school and regular Bible studies, women's, men's, prayer meeting. These are all offerings of the church. They're all places that can fortify you along your week journey. Week being W-E-E-K, but sometimes we, have, we are weak, W-E-A-K, in a week, right? So if you're prone to get discouraged or brought down or life just seems like... I. You need, we need to figure out how to bring you into the ministries of the church so that you are, there's less frequency for discouragement between Sunday and the next time that we see you. That's the hope. And that's the goal. And Satan loves to isolate you away from the scripture. I had a wonderful conversation with my wife about just how we both need to be reminded of the power of this precious word and being washed over it when it comes discouragement can come into our life and we just have to just really you know keep that in keep that in mind uh the, the bible is your is a wonderful 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 cleansing uh word that god will use and he'll teach you so much through it too all right so this occurs through personal bible study attending worship services on sunday mornings as well as sunday school and regular bible studies and matthew 4 john 17 second timothy um chapter 2 all these are just wonderful reminders of the power of the Word of God. 
Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to cut into joint and marrow. You know, it, it, it discerns the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. It gets down where something, no one else, no human counselor, no one goes as deep as the word of God. And God has a way of not only showing you what the need is, he will show you how he can, he literally will bring you to his side and he will teach you. That's, that's, the, that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's what he does. All right, let's end there because I'm going to start getting all these clocks telling me that, Pastor, you're done. Um, but we're right about a few minutes before church. So anyway, anybody who's just coming in, we are in sort of introductory mode for Grace Lighthouse Church and church membership. It's going to be a great little time from 9.15. I actually may push some of these to exactly 9 because I think we might need it. Uh, let, right, right now, let's go with 9.15 next Sunday. Um, we'll be back on, and uh, if we need to extend a couple of them, we will. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for those who have come today and expressing interest in church membership. And I, I thank you for just the wonderful work that you're doing here at GLC, Father. And that's what we want. We want the Lord Jesus Christ to be exalted in everything and never forgetting how you have taken us, um, you've washed us, you've, you've, you've cleansed us, you put our feet in a firm foundation, Lord, and uh, we just now want to live as your children, really live responsibly, live obediently, Lord, and just really thinking the way we should think now as your children. And we just thank you so much and bless each person here in the service to come. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so...